Lord Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight. We thank you not for anything that you've done just because of who you are, Lord. We thank you for waking us up this morning, for giving us peace in our hearts, Lord. Just for giving us the right mind and the right spirit, Lord. We thank you for bringing us out tonight, Lord. For someone didn't make it today. Someone didn't make it tonight, Lord. We ask that you just bless this word, have it to be what you want it to be, Lord. Take me out and put you in, Lord. Have it to be what you want it to be. Have it be your will, Lord. Have it to do what you desire that it do, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And I'm going to first give honor to God, who is the head of my life, to my pastor, Superintendent Hollins, to Lady Julia Hollins, and um, to Superintendent Davis, and to Lady Davis, and to all the pastors, bishops, and uh, superintendents, and uh, elder, and Pastor Hollins Jr., all the ministers, elders, uh, missionaries, mothers, everyone who's honored to do good honor to everyone. <laughs> yeah, that. Our theme tonight is No More Limits, Just Endless Possibilities, and it comes from Psalms 78 and verse 41. Psalm 78, uh, Asaph is talking about a stubborn and rebellious generation. And even though God performed miracles and he showed them signs and wonders, they still doubted him until he showed his wrath. That's when they came seeking after him. Isn't that just like some of us? God has proven who he is. Yet we wait till we feel his wrath, or we hit that wall, or we hit that rock bottom, or we hit our limit until we truly start to seek him. At these low points in our life, we want God to be our magician and get us out of yet another messy situation that we got ourselves in through disobedience. We say, God, if you just do this, I promise I won't do that anymore. Or if you just get me out of this situation one more time, I promise I'm not going to do that. I promise I'm going to go to church. I promise I'm going to go to Bible study. I promise I'm going to promise I'm going to promise I'm going to. Yeah, right. We say what we think God wants to hear from us so that he'll bail us out one more time. Verse 36 of chapter 78 of Psalms says, Nevertheless, they did flatter him with their mouth. And they lied unto him with their tongues, for their heart was not right with him, neither were they steadfast in his covenant. But he, somebody ought to say, but God, but God. being full of compassion, forgave their iniquities and destroyed them not. And our theme scripture says, yea, they turned their back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. So I'm here to tell you tonight that when God is in it, there's no more limits, just endless possibilities. So we say that God's will is what we want for our lives, yet we want everything to go the way that we want it to. We get mad and we throw tantrums and pity parties. Yes, adults, we throw tantrums. Don't try to act like you know. When we don't get things our way. But I want you to know that things happen in God's time, not in your time. For Ecclesiastes 3 and 1 says, to everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under the heaven. That thing that you wanted so badly, that door that you wanted to walk through but it was closed, it was for a reason. That wasn't the path for you. That wasn't your destiny. That wasn't God's will for your life. Or maybe it just wasn't the time for you. Maybe it's going to happen later on. Just not when you want it to, but when God wants it to. He might be preparing you for something better or bigger. Just get ready for it. We have to release our desire to control the situation and let God take the wheel. Has anyone ever tried to drive with the emergency brake on your car? I know I do, especially as a young driver. Sometimes you don't release that emergency brake. Yeah, it's possible to do, but you have to use a lot of force on the gas to get the car to go. Anybody know what I'm talking about? But when you, when you realize, oh, I'm driving with the emergency brake on, and you release that emergency brake, the car just miraculously just wants to go. So that's what we do. We release that control and release it. Let God just take the wheel and let him have the control. And then you, you see how you just start, your car will just start moving. Your, your life will just start moving in ways that you don't even know why your life is going in a certain direction. You start moving this way, you're like, I don't even know why I'm going this way. But then you start seeing the blessing coming because you released what you wanted to do and started doing what God wanted to do. jobs that you didn't even qualify for. Everybody knows what I'm talking about. You have food on the table and you didn't even think you had no money left. Ways out of no ways. Amen? With men, it's impossible. With God, all things are possible. But you cannot be afraid to go to those new levels. 
like I wouldn't tell y'all what I told my choir because they was afraid when I tried to take them to a higher level, a higher key. They said, that's not the key we singing in. I said, uh, do y'all scared to go to the next level? When you go to the next level, you are going to receive the blessing. For Joshua said, be strong and courageous, for God is with you. When you go to the next level, God is going to be with you. You don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be scared to go to the next level. He's not going to take you somewhere where he's not going to be right with you, taking you through. Amen. Stop getting upset about what you can't control and start controlling what you can control. Your prayer life, your daily scripture reading, what you're taking in and what you're giving up. To, much, to whom much is given, much is required. Start being more fruitful. Amen? So are you being just like that stubborn and rebellious generation? Have you turned away from God? He definitely hasn't turned away from you. Are you being limited because you're that branch that's trying to bear fruit without the vine? For in John 15, it says, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Are you living for him? Or are you expecting him to live for you? Turn to your neighbor and say, get your life. I say, get your life. God is not your servant. He wants you to serve him with your whole heart and trust in him in all things. For Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lead not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. So it doesn't matter if you don't understand what it is or why it is. Stop asking why. Stop asking why is this supposed to be this way? Why is this supposed to do this? Why is somebody supposed to do that? Why did I not get this? Why did she get this and not me? Why did Sister Sue get that car and I didn't? Why did Sister Sally get that job and I didn't? Why did Sister Sue got that drink and why she got that cheese on? Why she got that clothes? Why she got her hair done and I don't? Stop asking why your blessings are coming. What is for her is for her. What is for you is for you. Obeying. Start being obedient to what God told you to do. You're so worried about what somebody else is doing that you're not listening to what he's telling you. Deuteronomy 28 and 13 says, The Lord will make you the head and not the tail. If you pay attention to the commands of the Lord your God that I give you this day and carefully follow them, and you will always be on the top and not on the bottom. You want to rejoice tonight of being on the top. How many of be on the top? the best for you, but he wants your best in return. Wow. Psalms 37, 3 and 5 says, delight in the Lord and excuse me, delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Yes. Commit your ways to him. Trust in him and he will do this. So when God's in it and you're doing your part by doing what he tells you to do, you can wait with expectation. And by doing what he tells you to do, that doesn't mean just coming to church on Sunday. That doesn't mean just coming to Bible study once a week. That doesn't mean just open up your Bible one time and say, okay, I did this. That don't mean just pray for five seconds to be, oh, Heavenly Father, thank you, Jesus, name I pray, amen. And get up and go. That's not just talking about doing small spirit, small little things. Say, okay, I did my little part, Lord. What you gonna do for me now? I sing in the choir now, give me my blessings. I'm the choir director now, give me my blessings. It's not just about that, it's about having a personal relationship with him, about living your life, having your life, being to please him, living your life clean and pure, and seeking to live him in everything you do, in all things, not just in some things. For John 1, excuse me, 1 John 3, 21 and 22 says, we can have confidence before God and receive from him anything we ask because we keep his commands and do what pleases him. So if you're tired of facing limits and boundaries and you're ready for more, seek God with your whole heart. Not just when you need him to bail you out, but in all things. Converse with him through prayer, read and meditate on his word daily, live to please him and obey his commands. From this day forward, no more half-stepping. Don't make it a weekend love affair, but have a true committed relationship with God. Because when God's in it, there's no more limits, just endless possibilities.